finally completed set of jeans. Only took about four hours and they came out really nice. If you like what you see, hit the like or subscribe button. Also feel free to drop me a comment. Let's talk a little bit about jeans. What goes into making them and all the pieces necessary to make your own set at home. Now this is the basic nuts and bolts of the jeans. What I'm cutting out right now are all the tiny components that make up the zipper pieces, pockets, front and back panels. And what I'm going to do here is use the original jean material to cut out my patterns, which is what you see me doing. Now this is nice because I can customize from there however I see fit. This is me laying out the items of the pants so I can be sure I have all the materials necessary to complete the pants. You can choose anything for the interior of the pockets. I've chosen non-ripping digital camo. You can pick pretty much whatever. I do recommend stretchable material. This not so much, but I like it for me. Now it's important to have a reference pair when you're making these if you're doing it for the first time because you're probably not used to how they go together so it's important to have something to look at. What I'm doing here is basically ironing out the material so that I can sew it nice and easy. I'm going to serge all the ends which is what this machine does. This whips the open stitched ends so that they don't fray. It's especially important on any exposed seams which do happen on jeans. Not all of the seams are interlocking. This is actually an example of an interlocking seam where the material is folded in on itself. So when you attach two pieces, they actually make a clean, tight connection, as you can see here. Now it's important to remember to take your time. You'll see me adjust and readjust the stitcher just to make sure that I'm going to get a nice, clean stitch through the material. I definitely do take my time here. It's pretty easy to break a needle, and when you do, you have to pretty much start over. During this pair of jeans, I think I broke one needle, and that was because it was a needle I welded together for this project. Next comes the pockets. Now the pockets are fully customizable. I choose a center seam, and then I basically iron them out and then stitch the top ends and then I'll go and stitch the sides to make sure that they're nice and tight to the pants. You can do whatever type of seam you'd like. I prefer folding the material once, some people do twice. It just makes for a flatter pocket. You can position the pockets however you'd like. I like a little bit of an angle so anything that I put in them stays nice and flat and again I can't say it enough. Take your time with this. It really helps when you do. It's also important to make sure that your pockets are symmetrical. I've done some times where I'll stitch through a pocket and find out that it turned while I was sewing and then when you look at it one pocket looks cockeyed compared to the other. Now this material is extremely tough and it's important to use the proper materials. The thread I'm using is an upholstery thread. It's a brown, pretty heavy grade thread. And then the zipper I'm using is a YKK, which are the only zippers I recommend. I did use some cheaper zippers when I first started making pants and they always broke. You can see all the different stitches that go into making the zipper portion. Breaking a zipper on a pair of pants and trying to fix it is never a fun project. Now this is something that took me a long time to figure out how to do perfectly. This is stitching where your hand goes into the pocket. If you mess this up, this seam will be the first to fray out of everything you do. It's important to make sure you do lock the end stitches down and you go through one nice even pass. If you make multiple passes, it's super obvious and people can pick it out pretty quick. What I'm doing here is just reinforcing where the connections are on the pocket to the actual pants panel. The reason that's important is because that pocket gets a lot of use with your hand in and out and items in and out. So it's important that that has a nice tough stitch on it. This is me doing a seam that's folded in on itself. You'll notice that I'm running two passes of the sewing machine on this. One on the inside then one on the outside. The outside stitch is only really to hold the inside seam down so that it makes sort of an interlocking setup. 
it's much quicker and much easier because you don't have to change in between double headed needles and you don't have to do any sort of really difficult guiding by hand. As you can see I don't use any sort of guide. That is kind of unfortunate that I don't because it leaves me subject to having not straight seams. But when you're hiding most everything with double seams, it doesn't really matter how you do it. Now it's important on this portion to get all the material together. If you don't get the pocket sewed into the end seam, it's going to come apart and that pocket's going to pop loose and things are going to fall through. Now here I stitch the waistband onto the inside of the pants first, and then I'll flap the outside over and stitch it on it again. The reason I do this is it makes for a nice clean connection between the inside and outside of the waist. You can see here as I'm stitching it through, I'm also pulling material to ensure that I get to the end of the pants evenly. That's where you'll see those little pleats. That's where I'm actually pulling excess material. I can't say it enough, one more time, just in case you didn't hear it, take your time with this. If you rush it, you will have problems and you will struggle to get seams straight or you'll have the thread fall off what you're sewing and that means you have to cut all that thread off and start again. Now that it's all together, we're going to do kind of one of my signature items, which is the buttonhole. I do a pyramid style buttonhole. They do make specific items for my sewing machine to sew buttonholes, but I always find that I like this better because it's much more durable. I can sew over it twice and it really, really is tough. I can put a ton of weight on it, whether it's things in my waistband or I'm bending or twisting. It really does hold up to the test of time. And that's pretty much it. This is the finalized pair. I still have to put belt loops and do the hem, and these are going to get wax coated just like the tin pants you saw at the beginning of the video. If you enjoy, hit that thumbs up or subscribe button. Thanks.